Bread and Pastry Production for Grade 7 and 8. Our topic is Types and Uses of Cleaning Materials and Disinfectants for Week 5. Most Essential Learning Competencies Perform Basic Preventive Maintenance Types and Uses of Cleaning Materials and Disinfectants Tools are cleaned in accordance with standard procedures. The purpose of this lesson is to apply the lesson into the real-life situation to be able to be more independent in their daily living. First, identify the different types and uses of cleaning materials and disinfectants. Second, discuss the methods of cleaning and sanitizing tools and equipment. And third, sanitize baking tools and equipment. Day 1. In order for the learners to have a clear idea on the different objectives presented, they will answer this activity. Let us determine how much you already know about cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. Take this pre-assessment test. Learning task number 1. Directions. Read each statement carefully. Write true if you think the statement is correct and write false if you think the statement is not correct. Cleaning and sanitizing your kitchen on a regular basis should be an essential part of your housekeeping routine. Irregular cleaning of food preparation areas can leave you susceptible to dangerous bacteria. Kitchens, therefore, should be cleaned each time you prepare food and a complete and thorough clean should be done on your tools and utensils. Cleaning and sanitizing the kitchen Cleaning and sanitizing are the two common methods of killing or preventing the growth of microorganisms which causes a number of diseases in humans and also spoil the food. Therefore, it is beneficial to kill or prevent their growth to minimize their harmful effects. As a general rule, everything that has had direct contact with food needs to be cleaned and sanitized. Cleaning is the process of removing the food and other types of soils from a surface such as a dish, glass, or cutting board. Cleaning is done with a cleaning agent that removes food, soil, or other substances. The right cleaning agent must be selected because not all cleaning agents can be used on food contact surfaces. Disinfection Disinfection does not necessarily kill all microorganisms, especially non-resistant bacterial spores. It is less effective than sterilization, which is an extreme physical or chemical process that kills all types of life. Cleaning and sanitizing of functional the and non-functional tools. Cleaning and sanitizing the kitchen. Number one, cleaning. Cleaning means removing dirt from the food preparation surface in the kitchen. Surfaces can be counters, cutting boards, dishes, knives, utensils, pots, and pans. Cleaning steps. First, scrape any food debris into a bin before cleaning and sanitizing tools and equipment. Second, fill your sink with warm to hot water and an antibacterial detergent. Third, use a clean sponge or brush to scrub each item thoroughly, making sure to remove all bits of food and getting into all the little hard-to-reach areas. And number four, either to leave to air dry or use a dishcloth, which should be cleaned with a quality detergent to ensure you're properly cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. Number 2. Sanitizing Sanitizing means the reduction of germs to a safe level so illness is unlikely to occur. Sanitizing is performed after cleaning. Uncleaned surfaces will reduce the effectiveness of sanitizing. All surfaces that come into contact with food must be cleaned and sanitized regularly. Sanitizing Steps First, put your utensils in a large pan, covering them fully in water. Carefully bring the water to the boil, putting a lid on the pan for 5 minutes. Remove the lid and wait for the water to stop boiling before removing the utensils with prongs. 
Second, another method for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen utensils is to combine a tablespoon of bleach with a gallon of water, leaving your tools to soak before rinsing them thoroughly with hot water. The following are the essential kitchen cleaning materials and their uses. These tools will keep your kitchen clean and shiny. Having certain items on hand will ensure you are prepared to cook and clean properly. First is the rubber gloves. It is used to protect your skin from chemicals. You can choose a reusable or disposable gloves and wear them at all times during the kitchen cleaning process. Next is the scrubbing pad, a pad having a soft sponge-like side and more abrasive side used to wash off. It can work on cast iron, cookware, stainless steel pots, ceramic dishes, and plastic without damaging or nicking the surface. Scrub brush, a brush with a hard bristle for heavy cleaning. A long-handled scrub brush as well as thin bottle brushes makes quick work of dirty items with narrow openings. Plastic scraper, a tool that has a small handle and a metal or plastic blade and can be used for scraping a particular surface clean. The thin piece of pointed plastic works on enamel or non-stick cookware without causing nicks and dings. Fine steel wool, an abrasive material composed of long, fine steel shavings and used especially for scoring and burnishing. Scrub stove top grates, oven floors, and some baking pans. It will quickly take off bake on food that attach itself to burners and other oven items. Broom. Before disinfecting a floor, it's always best to use a broom or a dustpan and brush to sweep up any loose dust and dirt. Mop and bucket. Use these to disinfect kitchen floors. Look for a mop that has removable head for easy cleaning. Mops come in both sponge and string varieties. Sponges are good for tiled floors as they can get into the grooves of the grout, but string mops are also better for tackling corners. Microfiber cloths. It is essential for cleaning worktops and cooker tops. Never be tempted to use paper towels or other cloths that can disintegrate. You'll just give yourself more work. Dish cloth. It can whisk away dry crumbs and is absorbent enough to mop up spills. A stack of thin, lightweight, non-terry cloth towels can also be ideal for quick hand washing, buffing a serving platter, and swiping up drops of sauce or oil spills. Spray bottle. If you've decided to try making your own natural disinfectant from vinegar, it's handy to have an empty spray bottle to put it in. This means you can make up a large batch in one go and keep it in your kitchen cleaning cupboard until next time. Cleaning and sanitizing the kitchen. After carefully maintaining hygienically clean surface in your kitchen, it's essential to keep any kitchen utensils, dishes, and equipment clean too, to prevent them from becoming a source of bacteria that could contaminate your food and cause food poisoning. Disinfecting kills germs on surface or objects. It works by using chemicals to kill germs on surface or objects, which can lower the risk of spreading infection. Disinfectant is a chemical substance that is used to kill harmful germs and bacteria. Types and uses of disinfectant First is the bleach. It is an excellent disinfectant and one that can be used in different areas of your kitchen like floor, countertops, or the kitchen sink. However, when using bleach, it is important to make sure that you follow the directions on the label and work in a well-ventilated space. Disinfectant spray. Liquid sprays are very convenient when it comes to cleaning the kitchen. These sprays are often multi-purpose spray and can be used on a variety of surfaces. 
from cupboard handles to cooker tops. Floor cleaners. Liquid disinfectants or bleach can be diluted with warm water to create floor cleaners. Capable for cutting through food residues, greasy stains, and all the dust and dirt accumulated from food traffic. Natural disinfectants for the kitchen. Natural disinfectants made at home can also be effective at kitchen cleaning. Just be sure to test them on a small area first to check there is no adverse reaction. If you'd like to give the natural option a try, here are some cleaning products that will help you get the job done. One of the natural disinfectants for the kitchen is the vinegar. Vinegar is known for being an excellent all-around cleaner because its high acidity level means the moss germs simply cannot survive when they come into close contact. Depending on the surface material, you can use white or distilled vinegar straight from the bottle for a quick wipe down or dilute it with a little warm water. Don't worry, the smell will fade once the vinegar has dried, but if it's Proving too much, simply add a few drops of natural oils, such as lavender, lemon, or orange, into the mix beforehand. Lemons. The acidity of lemons means they are excellent kitchen cleaners and great at killing germs. For work surfaces, countertops, and sinks, slice a lemon in half and sprinkle with baking soda. Use this as scrubber to vanish ground in dirt. Baking soda. It is an alkaline substance. When it mixes with acid, it alters the pH level. It is great to scrub your bath and kitchen with. Hot water, 4 parts, can be mixed with 1 part part of vinegar and 2 tablespoons of baking soda. Use this solution to clean and disinfect your kitchen or house. You can also add few drops of essential oil and a juice of a lemon. Tea tree oil. Tea tree essential oil have natural disinfecting properties. Tea tree oil also good for antiviral and antifungal. Cleaning and sanitizing procedures for baking tools and equipment. There are a few options you have when it comes to cleaning agents. What you can use depends on the type of equipment you have and the surfaces with which it comes in contact. Number 1. Detergents Detergents should be used for cleaning table surfaces and equipment. Since detergent penetrates quickly and softens the surface, it makes the cleaning process easier. Number 2. Solvent Cleaners Use solvent cleaners for equipment and surfaces touched by grease or where grease is burned on. These solvents are also called degreasers. Remember that lingering grease could be a health hazard. Number 3. Acid Cleaners Take care of mineral deposits when detergents can do the job. Sometimes, mineral deposits will form in equipment that touches water, such as washing machines and steam tables. Number 4. Abrasive Cleaners if the food equipment has creases and hard-to-reach places, you might need to use an abrasive cleaner. These cleaners help take care of heavy accumulations and might even disinfect. Sanitizing Procedures If you're dealing with food equipment, cleaning is not enough. You also need to sanitize after you've cleaned the surface. This is because if the equipment has food residue on it, the residue can react with chemicals during the sanitation process. Sanitizing can be accomplished by using chemicals, heat, or radiation. You should know, however, that although radiation is an option, it is rarely used in food handling sanitizing procedures. Heat Sanitizing There are three ways to use heat to sanitize food equipment steam hot water and hot air hot water is the most typical method used in restaurants sanitizing food equipment using heat will depend on the size of the equipment for larger equipment you might need to resort to a hot air or steam number two chemical sanitizing common chemical used to sanitize includes chlorine iodine and ammonium 
the concentration, temperature, and contact time has to be precise to ensure that harmful bacteria are killed and equipment is ready to use safely again. Methods of cleaning and sanitizing baking tools and equipment include number one, disassembling. Remove all parts, blades, handles, screens, and glass or plastic inserts. Wash each with a food safety disinfectant and dry before reassembling. Number two, immersion. For cookware, utensils, appliance inserts, and other items that are covered in a layer of grime, immersing them in bath of sanitizing solution can make them easier to clean. The sanitizer such as diluted bleach or straight vinegar can lift stubborn food bits or thin layers of bacteria that are beginning to colonize. Number three is sterilizing. Place smaller items in a large pan of boiling water and add a food safe sanitizer that won't introduce dangerous vapors into the air. Items can also be steamed in a dishwasher or a colander over a larger pot of boiling water. Day 2 Development Learning Task Number 2 Direction After reading types and uses of cleaning materials and disinfectants, put a check on the appropriate box if the given agent is a chemical or natural. Day 3 Engagement Learning Task Number 3 Kitchen Inspection Look around your kitchen and list down 5 materials and agents used in cleaning and disinfecting kitchen tools and equipment and its uses. Follow the sample format. Day 4 Assimilation Learning Task Number 4 Directions Write the proper cleaning, disinfecting agents, and the procedure in cleaning the following tools. Use the following format in presenting your work. Day 5 Assessment Learning Task Number 5 List down 5 natural cleaning materials and write their uses. This is Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching.